All right, our next topic on electronic structure is photons. So we've already discussed a bit about photons in the previous video, where if you wanted to move an electron from one energy shell to another energy shell, you would need to absorb or emit a photon. So to begin with, I want to talk about the equations you'll need to know for the MCAT about calculating the energy of a photon. The first equation we have is E equals HV. E, of course, stands for the energy of a photon. H is Planck's constant. This is equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. And we have V, which stands for frequency. Now you have to be a little careful here because usually V stands for speed or velocity, but in this case it is frequency. And this is the general convention that is used. There are some situations where the equation is also written as E equals HF. So then you have F for frequency but this is the more common convention. Now, what's particularly important about this equation is you can tell that there's a proportion here. Since H is a constant, that tells us the energy of the photon is directly proportional to the frequency of that photon. And this is important to remember, not only because the MCAT likes to test a lot of questions about proportions, but that this is true not only for light, but for all types of waves. So for all waves, if you increase the frequency, you're increasing the energy of that wave. Okay, so let's take a look at our next equation, which is E equals HC over lambda. H is still Planck's constant. C is the speed of light, but specifically in a vacuum. So that's your three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And it's important that this is in a vacuum because if light is in any other medium, it is slower. Okay, lambda stands for the wavelength, and again, we have another important relationship, and that is the energy of a photon is inversely related to the wavelength of the light. Now, for the MCAT, you do need to know about all the different colors of light, and you can see this best in this diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum, where you can see light at the low energy side with radio waves, and all the way to the side of high energy with gamma rays that we talked about before with radioactivity. So when you're looking at that spectrum, where you have high energy with gamma rays, based on where we just discussed, you also have high frequency as well as short wavelengths. On the other side with radio waves where you have low energy, that's where you have low frequency and long wavelengths. Now, it is important for the MCAT that you be able to remember the order of the different types of light along the electromagnetic spectrum. So going from radio waves to microwaves to infrared light to visible light, UV light, X-rays, and gamma rays, lowest to highest energy. Among all the different types of light, the ones that you need to know best are, of course, visible light. So for visible light, you actually have to have memorized that the wavelengths of visible light are specifically from 400 to 700 nanometers. So 400 nanometers would be for violet light, 700 nanometers would be for red light. This way, if they ask you a question like, hey, what color is light with a wavelength of 900 nanometers? If you're debating between infrared light and UV light, you would be able to know hey, 900 is greater than the wavelengths of visible light, 400 to 700 nanometers, and longer wavelengths is lower in energy, so that must be infrared light. Okay, so moving on, the next topic is line spectra. Before we talk about line spectra, we actually wanna talk about continuous spectra, because that helps us to understand what line spectra look like. So, a continuous spectrum, we say, contains light of all wavelengths. So light is interesting, it's different from paint. If you take all the different colors of paint and you mix them together, you get black. But if you take all the colors of light and you mix them together, you get white light. So you can see in this diagram that we have the continuous spectrum from white light, and you can see you basically have the full rainbow, all the different wavelengths of light in that spectrum. The other type of spectrum is line spectra. And if you look at line spectra, they contain light of only discrete wavelengths. So that means it's not gonna be continuous with all of the different colors of light, 
but only a few particular wavelengths here and there. And there are two types of line spectra that you're going to want to know from MCAT. The first is absorption line spectra. To understand how this works, it helps to look at a diagram of how the absorption line spectra is generated. So in short, you're going to take a sample in its ground state and you're going to shine white light on it. When you shine white light onto that sample in its ground state, the sample is going to absorb some wavelengths of that light. Whatever light that is unabsorbed is then going to be passed through a prism to form the absorption spectrum. When you look at the absorption spectrum, you can see that it looks very similar to the continuous spectrum, except there are a few dark bands where light has been absorbed. Those dark bands do correspond to what samples or what wavelengths of light were absorbed by your sample. Okay. The next is emission line spectra. Emission line spectra in many ways is the opposite of absorption line spectra. Whereas in absorption line spectra, you started with a sample in its ground state, in emission line spectra, you're going to start with a sample in its excited state. As we've discussed before, samples in their excited state are at a high energy state. They're unstable and they'll tend to spontaneously relax to emit photons. So when the sample emits light, that light is going to be captured and put through a prism, and the prism is going to separate the different colors of light to generate the emission spectrum. The emission spectrum, you're going to see a lot of dark, uh, a lot of you know darkness because not that many colors of light are being emitted. But those few bright bands that you see represent the wavelengths of light that is emitted by your sample in its excited state. And if you actually compare the absorption spectrum with the emission spectrum, you're going to see that they look very similar, that the dark bands in the absorption spectrum correspond to the bright bands in the line spectrum. And that makes sense because as we said before, whatever amount of energy you need to move an electron from a lower energy level to a higher energy level is the same energy of the photon released when you move from that same higher energy level to that same lower energy level.